Hi, uh, Paulo from Portugal. Um, this is a, a really a visual masterpiece. So I, I would like to ask the, the cast and also the director, how was to work with the, the Portuguese DP Eduardo Serra? How much <laughs> did he contribute to the, to the style of these two films? Thank you. Um, Eduardo's uh, just got a very elegant European style and we wanted both films to feel very different basically. So the first one has lots of blue, sort of grayish tones, and the second one has a lot of very rich blood, fire, quite apocalyptic, very grainy. Um, but he was, he was very charming, Eduardo. He doesn't speak much English, so there was a kind of translation issue, but he was always really delightful to have around, and, um, and a very, very sweet, gentle man, actually, which suited our family, as it were. This is a question for Jason, Robbie, and Michael. Uh, I wonder how you feel that being involved in this series of films has impacted on your, even your well-established careers. I'm so glad you called it a series of films. So first of all, I get... Uh, sorry, Michael. No, no. Stepped into the breeze. Um, because I, it always upsets me when I hear it called a franchise, because that's when someone sells burgers and someone else goes, I'll have one of those. I'll open a shop selling burgers as well. This is a, a, a series of... This is one story, essentially, yeah, exactly. that's taken 10 years exactly. to, to tell so beautifully with such care. No yeah. one's trying to... It seems to me there's not a drop of cynicism in anybody's participation uh, or mine. And, and it's an odd thing to be asked um, how it's affected your career because I don't, I don't have a parallel career. I don't know what it would have been had I not been in this. I, I'd have been doing something else, I presume. Uh, I just know that I've loved doing it. I mean, every second of my participation in the films, and then oddly for me, I don't know if it's true for the other two, I don't normally care what happens after I do my job, which is the acting. I love that part of it. I love being part of the storytelling process, but very unusually for me, I love being part of everything to do with Harry Potter, to seeing how much pleasure, the, uh, to seeing actually that it's received with as much love as we made it uh, is a very rare experience. And uh, I've literally not a clue what would have happened to my career else. It's like when people ask me, what would I do if I wasn't an actor? Um, I, I don't know, you offer me a job, <laughs> I'll follow you around and make you coffee, I don't know. Um, so, no idea, but I'm really glad it's turned out this way, my answer. Um, I have to say, uh, I've just been filming 10 days, nights, with lots of smoke to make it look like it was shot in 1958. So, if I sound slightly sexy, ignore me, girls. <laughs> um, I, it really pisses me off. If you'll talk about a franchise, this is about seven years in a boy's life. And um, I think that's the way we, we should see it. Uh, as far as um, my career is concerned, I, as I said earlier, I've got to play a really, really nice man who gets slightly older over 10 years. Um, how hard would that be? Um, but I, I think most of us who've been involved in this have been um, we're all kind of very emotionally tied into it, I have to say. We're all terribly sad that it's all over. <laughs> Just kidding. A lot of these people, <laughs> a lot of people are from France. They don't know what I'm being ironic. They, um, uh, so, so on a personal level, it's, it's been wonderful. And I, I, I mean, God save us. If you look at the list of people who have been involved in these films in the last 10 years, the directors, the... Um, the cameramen and all that—it's been an absolute—it's um, been an extraordinary collection of people who've all been stuck in the same place, off and on for ten years, and we're all—I think we're all just desperately proud, aren't we? Uh -huh. Aren't we? Yep. Yeah. Yes, we're all terribly proud. <laughs> well, I'm so happy to have been offered a part, a wonderful part, in a film that's lasted seven years. I couldn't have believed that before. I've never had that long time before, and. Um, it's, uh, I really enjoyed it thoroughly. I'm very grateful. And, and they also give you time off to make other films. Yeah, they do. And I've made, you know, yeah. three films, and they, they oblige and just let you have the time off, which is remarkable. Thank you. Yes, I have to say that. They've been very, very generous about giving us time off. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Davey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a couple of films off. I could have done without it, Frank. <laughs> I had a year off at one point. It was too much. I'd like to come to the middle of the hall now. Um, there's a, a man in the third row, and a microphone is coming to you right now, sir. There you go. If you'd pass it along in just a moment. Go ahead. Hi, my question is for Ivana. Um, Luna is such a, a well-loved standout character. How does it feel to leave her behind? And 
what is what is your plan now uh, once the Harry Potter machine dies down? Are you going to remain in acting or do something else? Um, yeah, well, I think I really feel so lucky to have played Luna because she was always my favorite character. Um, I think she's um, like such a, a, a really good role model because she's 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 perfect, but she's not trying to be perfect. She is herself. Um, and uh, Sorry, I always do this. I forget what you said in the rest of the question. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, um, but there was something else. And, uh, and what you plan to do uh, once um, Harry Potter dies down? Yeah, I, I don't know. I am <laughs> distraught that this is over. I've been just obsessed with this book since I was eight, so I don't really know what I was before that or what's going to come next. So um, I've heard they're opening a Harry Potter um, experience thing where Leavesden was, so I'm free as a tour guide. That's all I'm happy to do. <laughs> That's great. And the, the same row, there's a, a gentleman about five in there. Please, if you could take that. Yeah, gentleman with the glasses. Yes, coming, microphone coming to you now. Thank you. Uh, question to our fines. You are not only a bad guy, you are the worst we can imagine. <laughs> Did you have reactions with people like this? so that they really didn't take it as a role, but that some people told you on the street, I hate you, or well, writing things like that. <laughs> I had a letter the other day from a man who was shocked at the, the narcissism of Voldemort, and was disturbed. <laughs> but mostly, I don't get recognized, because I retain my own nose and perhaps some hair. Um, but it's been a wonderful part to play, great, great high-definition villain, and I've, I've loved it, and uh, loved working with everyone here. Uh, I have a question uh, for uh, Warwick, because you play, uh, you play two roles in this film, obviously, you're both Grip Hook and uh, The Professor. Yeah. Uh, what was that like for you, uh, swapping between the two roles? Uh, well, fortunately, we didn't have to do it within the same day that might have been tricky because uh, both roles require an extensive amount of prosthetic makeup. Um, but it was a, a pleasure. I mean, I almost felt a bit greedy in a way, taking the two parts. But uh, Flitwick was one I'd established, you know, over, over the course of all of the films. And, uh, and then to be asked to, to fulfill the role of Grip Hook was, was amazing. And um, it was such a terrific experience working closely with David um, in bringing the character to the screen. And, just really giving him some depth and, uh, and uh, hopefully that comes across in the film because uh, he certainly was a lot of fun to play and always playing you know, a slightly villainous character is always the one that you want as an actor, certainly. Um, and uh, you know, fingers crossed people won't spot that uh, it is indeed the same person under both guises. Uh, but, uh, but the advantage is that you, you know, as one character dies in the film, you can always, you're always there as the next one. So that's, that was quite handy for me. So I'm there until the bitter end in one form or another. <laughs> okay, um, there's a, a lady in the front row here, and then we can get the microphone to a couple of gentlemen just on this side. Thank you. I have a couple of questions to Emma, please. Um, what was the sort of best memory you'd like to take away from the whole experience and what was the most challenging thing? And what does the Hermione uh, character mean to you? Oh my goodness. Um, best memory. Um, gosh. Uh, I think. Getting to do that, uh, getting to work with Helen the Bonham Carter, uh, both when she tortured me and uh, when um, we got to work together with her um, playing me, essentially, and we had so much fun and um, I just really, yeah, really enjoyed working with her and, and uh, that was great. Uh, your second question was, best, I'm sorry. Um, oh, most challenging. Uh, gosh. Well, I was lucky in a way because the last two films were really challenging, but particularly with this last one, I was so emotional anyway. <laughs> you know, about how I felt about it all ending, and um, the, the film deals with loss, and, um, and I was also going through my own kind of like grieving and 
saying goodbye to people. And so having to say goodbye to Dan uh, and so having to say goodbye to Harry, they were all of all of this was kind of weirdly mirror imaging everything that was happening. So I was able to bring a lot of that to the role. And that made my life quite easy, really, in a way. Um, so um, lucky on that front. And then what does Hermione mean to me? What doesn't she mean to me? Uh, she's been like, I think of her like a sister or like someone that I, I don't know. She feels so real to me. And when people ask what I'll miss most, of course I will miss the people, but I will actually just miss being her. Um, getting to come into work every day and be this girl that lives in this magical, amazing world and get to go on all the adventures that she goes on. Um, that part's quite devastating. I'll miss wandering around in Stuart Craig's sets and, uh, you know, and having these two as friends and, you know, it's been pretty great, so... Just before we go back to the floor, um, I'd like to ask uh, James and Oliver, I mean, you're the jokers on screen, but when the cameras aren't rolling, who are the cast members who are the jokers? Who, who got up to the most jips? Uh, he did. Um, <laughs> I don't know, really. Um, we do like to have a joke, actually. Um, I think playing these characters from an age when you're learning who you are must have had something to do with it. But I mean, uh, but Rupert's quite in on jokes what goes on and pranks and everything what goes on. Um, I think we're always lucky because if we ever did a practical joke and got caught, we could just say that we're practicing for our roles. So it was uh, quite fortunate playing Fred and Georgie that way, but I think everyone of the cast throughout the 10 years pulled at least one practical joke on another, uh, especially Michael. No, not me, he's telling lies. <laughs> Um, I have two questions for David Yates, and one is, uh, what is your personal explanation about uh, this uh, so big uh, success <laughs> of uh, Harry Potter saga? And uh, the second question is, if you think that Harry Potter can have maybe uh, a prequel? Thank you. Uh, wow. Um, Many reasons these movies are so successful. It's the beautiful books that they're based on that have this global fan base. And um, this eclectic series of characters. I mean, Jo's very generous in creating this world. And she's given us so many characters that are so vivid that there's kind of someone for everybody, I think. Also the fact that the world offers us something bigger. And Emma just put it so beautifully, something bigger and more extraordinary than our ordinary lives. And I think there's a sort of sense of wish fulfillment in, in, in that storytelling. And there are some very universal storytelling themes, the fight against good and evil, and the power of love and faith, and the feeling of loss. And, and, and death is a big feature in the movies too. There's an interesting YouTube documentary made, A Life in a Day, and I was talking to Liza Marshall who produced that. And I said, what kind of films did you get from people all over the world? And she said, amazingly, a lot of them were, a, a lot of these films that were contributed were about death. People are interested in death. And death as an issue isn't really something that figures in the Hollywood sort of rule book of how you make a popular film. But death is a theme that runs through Joe's books and the sense of loss and the sense of dealing with loss. So I think there are you know, many reasons why these films are successful. And, and will there be a prequel? I think, but, you know, jo Joe's got such an extraordinary imagination. I don't know how you put a stop on that. If suddenly it must pour out of her all the time. But I think personally, um, and I'm sure if she writes more, the world will be, you know, very happy to consume and read. But I think there's a time and a place for certain stories and certain experiences. And I think this series of books and this series of films sit uniquely in a period of time. And I think it would be a shame, really, to, to try and recreate or, or continue them. I think they sit perfectly where they are, and it seems fine that they're just there. Just to be clear, Jo has no plans to write another book. Um, she may another story. She may write things connected to Harry Potter, like she's doing Pottermore, the, you know, the website. She's not, I don't, I don't see her, like, I, she's not going to write another book on another Harry Potter. You know, Harry at the age of 23 at business school. I just don't know. <laughs> That would be a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Bestseller. 
Harry in the organic bread factory. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a couple of questions over here now. The gentleman with the check shirt, and then if we can move back to the gentleman with the black shirt, just a couple of rows behind. Thank you. Uh, hello, Juan Carlos Garcia from Mexico for Tom. I would like to know uh, which was the best and the worst part of working in Harry Potter as not the good one, and uh, what are your plans on music and some other stuff? Uh, wow, uh, best and worst things. Um, best has to be really having the opportunity to work with um, not only these fantastic people, but all the crew that obviously can't be here, and, uh, and, and everyone really that we've worked with for the, over the last 10 years. It, it definitely is like a, a mini family, excuse the, the, the cliche, but it is kind of true. Um, the worst thing, and, and there really aren't many, uh, to be honest with you, but if I had to pick one thing, um, dyeing my hair blonde was slightly arduous after, after 10 years. Um, <laughs> Even though it seemed to build some sort of superhuman resistance, it still seems to be okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm not suffering too badly. But yeah, that got slightly painful after six or seven years of it, to be honest with you. But you could hold websites. What's that? Devoted to how gorgeous you are. Bless you, Robbie. So don't, I said no years don't, ago, don't all right? Let's just it leave it. <laughs> Haven't you got one, Robbie? <laughs> Robbie spent a lot like of time looking at those websites. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, just, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to obviously been working with, with these guys for the last 10 years and uh, fingers crossed I get to work with some of them again over the next 10 or so. Um, I've, I've really uh, sort of cemented a passion for filmmaking over the last few years and I hope to continue to do so. Thank you. Dominic Corey from New Zealand here. As my question is for the three Davids. This is the biggest film series of all time, and it's British. How can the British film industry capitalise on its success to keep these kind of films going that have such a British sensibility to them? <laughs> well, I honestly don't know. I mean, it's taken uh, the, since the beginning of uh, cinema history to find the, a franchise, well, not a franchise, a saga, <laughs> a saga like this, um, that where you can tell a single story over uh, multiple books and films. Um, and if anyone has another one in their back pocket, I'd love to get to it before anybody else does. Um, uh, we've left a legacy, I think, with the English, uh, well, the British visual effects industry, which didn't exist in quite the same way before Harry Potter. From the second film onwards, uh, very complicated work that would normally be given to our American uh, counterparts uh, has stayed in England, and they now send their work here. So um, uh, that's one thing we've left behind. And Leavesden Studios, actually. We've, uh, Leavesden is going to remain. Warners have bought it. Uh, they're developing it as um, uh, a slightly less uh, leaky studio. Uh, and uh, it will be there, hopefully, for a long time. And they will bring a lot of work to it to, to make their purchase worthwhile, which should benefit the industry as a whole. I think the remarkable thing that David Heyman did and Joe Rowling right at the beginning was to say, this will stay in Britain and it will be British and it's created such an infrastructure and such an industry and it will be sorely missed. It's gonna create a huge hole. And beautiful things have happened. Stuart Craig's art department, for example, has a way of bringing on sort of young trainees. It's sort of, it's been a mini, mini industry employing hundreds and thousands, thousands of people, in fact. So it's in all our interests in, our, in this com creative community to find the next one. Um, but I think lightning doesn't strike twice and it'll be very hard to follow the kinetic power of Harry Potter. Um, but believe you me, there are no shortage of people looking for the next big possibility, <coughs> I think. I think that, that uh, the combination of the quality of people working in front of and behind the camera in this country, which I think are as good as, and better than anywhere in the world, along with, frankly, the tax break, mean, and, and the fact that London and the UK is a fantastic place to be, means that filmmakers and studios will continue to make films in this country. In terms of what we generate ourselves that isn't from without, but is from within, I th as David said, it, lightning doesn't strike twice. And I think it's really one of the reasons why I think Harry Potter works is it is culturally specific but it's thematically universal. It's really about things that, it's about love and death and loss and friendship and loyalty and 
good versus evil. We all know characters like Harry, Ron, and Hermione. We've all had teachers like Dumbledore and Snape and Lupin. Um, we haven't known too many Voldemorts, I hope. Um, but these are people who are not, yes, they're British, but I think they are relatable to people all over the world. And I think one of the things we can do is find stories that have that universality. Because we have, I mean, you look at you know, Narnia and Lord of the Rings, and those are the fantasy ones, but you know, there are, we have in this country generated and um, written novels and plays and television series and films that have been seen the world over. And I just think we need, you know, we can and we will do it. It's no question.